Hello guys, welcome back. In this video we will explore what are the different cooling system options available. The climate systems used to actively cool buildings can generally be divided up into three types. Number one, systems with air based cooling. Number two, systems with water based cooling. And number three, combined systems cooling supply by using both air and water. DX stands for direct expansion and is a term that uses refrigerant as the cooling medium. With DX cooling, refrigerant flows through the cooling tubes and air is blown over the tubes covered with fins. The air does not come in contact with the refrigerant but only to the cold metal surface of the coil. Since the air is cooled directly by the refrigerant, the cooling efficiency is higher. However, it is not feasible to carry the refrigerant piping to the large distances. Hence, the DX type is usually used for cooling the small and medium sized buildings. Three types of HVAC systems utilize water in the cooling process. The first type is water cooled systems. These systems reject heat from the refrigerant to water in a water cooled condenser. Typically, water enters the condenser at 80 degrees Fahrenheit and leaves the condenser at 90 degrees Fahrenheit. The water then goes to a cooling tower where a portion of the water is evaporated and the balanced water with a mix of makeup water is circulated back to the condensers once again. Where water is scarce, dry coolers are used instead of cooling tower to prevent water loss due to evaporation. The second type of system is a chilled water system. In this type of system, water is cooled to 40 to 45 degrees Fahrenheit by chillers in a central plant. This water is circulated throughout a building and runs through water coils in air handling units, leaving the coils at an approximate temperature of 55 degree Fahrenheit. Room air is drawn into the air handlers and is blown over the chilled water coils, where it exits at a temperature of approximately 52 degrees Fahrenheit. Like DX type cooling coil, the air does not contact the chilled water but only the cold metal surface of the coil. Since the chillers are located remotely at a distance from the control space, it reduces noise, simplifies refrigerant handling, eases maintenance and improves reliability. These systems are truly centralized systems and are found largely in high-rise or campus buildings. The third type of system is known as an evaporative cooler or a swamp cooler, sometimes called nature's air conditioner. Just as a breeze across wet skin provides cooling, as the moisture evaporates. An evaporative cooling does the same. The dry air is passed through some porous media that is wetted with water. As the air contacts the water spread over the media, much of the water evaporates. It is normally found only in very hot and dry climates. Air is drawn into the cooler by a blower and passes over an absorbent pad. The pad is continuously soaked with water as the hot dry air passes over the wet absorbent pad. Some of the water is evaporated. This cools the whip head the same way moisture evaporating from your skin cools your body. The air leaves the cooler at a reduced temperature. This temperature is dependent on the relative humidity of the air being drawn into the cooler. The combined hybrid system cooling is supplied using both air and water. The system can be configured in various forms. For example, the DX system may use the air cooled condenser for heat rejection. The DX system may use the water cooled condenser for heat rejection. The chilled water system may use the air cooled condenser for heat rejection. The chilled water system may use the water cooled condenser for heat rejection. Some of the factors that must be taken into account when deciding the most appropriate HVAC configuration include space, HVAC equipment, and the air or water distribution runs take up a lot of space in the building's floor plan. Maintaining building facade and aesthetics is an important concern to the architects. Cost HVAC is usually the largest major budget item in construction of buildings. Air systems tend to be comparable to water systems in terms of initial cost. Comfort Building success depends on how comfortable people are inside and how affordable it is for them to be that way. Control of noise and vibration is an important parameter. Efficiency Water systems and air systems are comparable in terms of efficiency. Water is a little better but costlier. Maintainability The equipment must be accessible for maintenance and replacement purposes. Thank you guys. See you in the next video.